Um, I would like now to turn to Christophe Franceau. Christophe is, uh, in a way, the, the French, official French voice for critical raw material. He is the uh, Deputy Director General and the Scientific Director of the French Geological Survey, BIGM. Uh, he is in charge of defining and implementing the overall scientific strategy of that body in different fields. Um, and, uh, well, he is deeply involved in those issues. For instance, he ha has been uh, vital uh, in launching uh, OFREMI, the French observatory in charge of monitoring the CRM value change. So, another expert, but someone who really uh, has the government uh, position and who perhaps also is able to convey the one or the other message to the French uh, government, uh, what could be extremely helpful. Uh, S'il vous plaît, uh, Christophe, c'est à vous. Thank you very much for, for your introduction. Uh, so it's my pleasure to be with you today, and I'm going to try to invite to give you a few insights regarding the critical questions of the critical raw materials. So a lot have already been said regarding the scene of this uh, issue, but I want just to maybe add a few things to what has already been mentioned. So first, we mentioned a lot the need for the energy transition. For sure, it's very important, in particular, to mitigate the global climate change. But we do not have to forget that we have also to uh, handle at the same time the digital transition, which is also uh, requiring a very large amount of critical raw materials. And for two thirds of them, they are the same as for the energy transition. So we may have a kind of trade off to have between the two. And also the development of the emerging countries, which require a significant amount of uh, critical raw materials for <coughs> developing the infrastructure. So altogether, it yields to a very significant increase of the demand, and the number of you are huge, and it's a real issue to uh, assess whether we will be able to meet this demand. I just remind just a few figures. For instance, the uh, volume of lithium that will be required by 2040 to develop the uh, uh, electric uh, core is four times, 40 times higher than what we are using today. Uh, it's 20 times higher for nickel, cobalt, and graphite. It's 10 times higher for the ORF. So it's a very huge number, in particular when you consider that, in fact, it requires, as has already been mentioned, between 15 and 20 years to open new mines. Another point which is very important is a large number of these metals are not taken directly from the ground for themselves. They are byproducts from other metals which means that in terms of dynamics of the market, they are not directly related to the, uh, to the need, to the demand, in fact. And uh, it means that uh, we have, therefore, some highly complex value chains, that it, and it's already a first, uh, issue, uh, first challenge to be able to depict, describe, understand all of them. And also, um, the value chains are very long. I mean, with large number of transformation steps, and many of them are dispersed in many countries. Uh, and it's once again uh, a factor of complexity that we need to be able to understand and to take into account. So it means to, that in this situation we have some uh, long but also weak value chains uh, which can be uh, uh, um, perturbated by any events that could occur and uh, we had a large number of, of disruptions in the last years. Uh, whatever the, the size of the disruption. Maybe two points which is important to keep in mind. First, the critical raw materials are rather dispersed all over the world. So when it is mainly located in a single country, it's not because it's the only country where you find it. It's mainly it's because this, this country has been specialized in this domain, has been exploring a lot, and has been exploiting this resource. But uh, for sure, we may find it uh, elsewhere, even if it takes time. And second, we have also not to forget the key role of China, uh, which is not only anymore on the mining side, but rather on the refining and transformation. And for more than 10 elements right now, they are really dominating the market. I mean, they are uh, most than 90% of the overall supply worldwide is coming from China. So it means that it's a very uh, highly dependent to this country uh, and also high risk in case of uh, perturbations. And it can be very uh, various elements like not only rare earth, but also graphite, gallium, germanium, tungsten, 
magnesium, so large number of elements which, can, which are used in many usage. So what can we do in order to uh, recover, I will say, a part of our independence and sovereignty? So first, we need to be able to understand quite well all these value chains. So it's uh, the domain of the mineral intelligence. Uh, you mentioned in your introduction that we launched in France a dedicated observatory uh, uh, exactly one year ago. Uh, similar structure exists uh, in other countries, and uh, there is a need for uh, increasing this work, for networking this type of activity, and we are, for instance, collaborating very efficiently with the DIRA in Germany. Uh, second, we need also to uh, ensure uh, an optimized use of the natural resource. So we need to deal with, to cope with the uh, recycling activities with the secondary resources which is available in the urban mines. It's something quite important. It's also a very good way in order to develop some new extracting, purification, transformation industry. But we all have to keep in mind it will never meet the demand. Because what you recycle right now is what has been produced 20 years ago, roughly. The amount of critical raw material was not the same at that time. The type of, my, of metals or more critical raw materials was different. So for sure it's very important, but it will never meet all the demand we have. So therefore the only way is to open new mines. It has to be very clear. And as you mentioned very efficiently, if we want to be pro-energy um, transition, you have to be pro-mine uh, development, in fact. Uh, not only in the emerging countries, but also in Europe, in the developing, developed countries, we still have a lot of resources in the underground. It's not uh, uh, known and it's not exploited right now, mainly for economic and social reasons. I will be back on that later on. So we need to develop some new responsible mining activities and it's a huge challenge. And last but not least, because it's still not enough, we will have to secure supply from uh, third countries with uh, th thanks to long-term contracts, long-term strategic partnerships. So what's new in 2023 regarding these four lines? So I will say that uh, there have been a very significant mobilization of the uh, government and uh, uh, national, national government with the creation of several mineral intelligence agencies, the development of investment funds and tools in many countries, uh, in France, for instance, a strong uh, development of uh, environmental, societal and governance criteria uh, regulations, uh, in particular at the uh, European level, in order to ensure that uh, new mines will be responsible mines, uh, environmental friendly. Uh, development of ambitious policy, and I have to mention the Critical Raw Material Act, which is still under discussion at the European level, and which is very ambitious regarding the um, rate uh, of independence for the uh, supply of critical raw materials coming either from primary resources or from recycling. Uh, also the development of industrial partnerships f with Europe, with the United States and so on, which is uh, the, the first steps uh, in order to develop some long-term contracts. But at the same time, and it's also something new, we had some restriction measures which have been taken by China regarding germanium and gallium first in June, graphite two weeks ago. I'm, not I'm quite sure the list is not uh, finished, and so it means that uh, we have to be prepared to a potential, uh, not disruption, but at least reduction or quotas or production or exportation, I would say rather, uh, of these minerals which are used in many applications from defense to medicines, thanks to, uh, through energy and so on. And third point, the number of new projects which arrives on the market is very limited, and it's not at scale by comparison to what we need. So the main question of the discrepancy between the need of the future and the, what the market is going to be able to, uh, to supply is huge and is increasing and it's therefore uh, posing the questions uh, about uh, how can we ensure the energy transition if we do not have the resource. Uh, my feeling right now is that we are, not able, we are not going to be able to meet some highly political uh, objectives which has been uh, proposed and voted, for instance uh, 2035 uh, obligation of full electrical car in Europe. I'm, from my perspective, not sure we'll have the resources to do that at that year. And it's not a question of stockpile of natural resources in the ground. It's a question of how fast can you extract this resource to provide it to the market and be able to meet the demand. So it's really a question of the, the dates at which we want to reach this target 
instead of the target by itself. And it's something which is quite important with many repercussions, many uh, consequences, in particular in terms of uh, uh, political uh, uh, policy development, policy making, and also uh, confidence in the global uh, decision making process. Because I'm quite sure that at least at the European level, many of the citizens may react regarding the, uh, the change in these uh, strong objectives which, which has been put, put forward uh, by the government. Yeah. Another important message is uh, also uh, the fact that we need new minds. It seems that it's very clear, even in Europe, even in France. So uh, with the CRM Act, there is some new exploration program which is uh, developing right now. It's very important. But the main question beyond is uh, how are we going to convince our citizens of the interest of building new mines potentially not far from their houses? And uh, it's a real question, a real debate that need to be open about what are the consequences of our way of life? Uh, how can we assume the consequence of this way of life? Uh, and we need to uh, start from now uh, uh, work in order to increase the acceptability of uh, this new type of uh, activity and it's for sure embed high uh, ethical issues because otherwise it means that we are exporting in fact uh, detrimental effect of our way of life. So as a conclusion I think uh, based on what the question you ask what's the main message from 2023 we have some very positive mobilization from the national government and uh, which is really moving forward uh, the topic is back to the forefront of the geopolitics and it's very important and you can see for in, we can see at least for in, instance in France that uh, in any of the displace, official displacement for our presidents the topic of the critical raw material is on, uh, on, in debate but at the same time we still have this perspective of a strong discrepancy between the political trajectory that we try to meet and the effective industrial capabilities to produce the materials. <clears throat> so it's, uh, for me, a potential for a, a new crisis, not only for the market of metals, but also in terms of uh, confidence in the policy-making process. Thank you very much. Yeah. Merci, Christophe. C'était, uh, encore une fois, très intéressant et uh, important. Uh.